Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Deez. This is my workshop, and today we're going to make another toy, so to speak. This is a, a kind of a bar game or a garage game. A lot of you out there, if you worked in a machine shop, you probably made these things. But this is that old game called Put and Take. It's pretty simple. Uh, you make a spinning top, and you mark up six sides of something. It's The key is it needs to spin, and whatever it lands on... You need to put or take uh, an object. Um, you know, a lot of people pay for quarters. I don't advocate gambling. But uh, what you would do is everybody puts puts a quarter in or puts a token in of some sort. The first person goes, spins the top, and whatever it lands on, AP means all put. So everybody puts another token in. The next guy spins. Take two person who spun gets to take two, so on and so forth. Take one, put one, put two, all put, take all, you can take them all. Anyway, it's a fun little game if you're uh, hanging out with some friends and, and you just want something to kill some time. I thought I'd try to tackle making one of these things out of some hex that I have, a brass version of it, and that's what we're going to do today. So I think I can make three of these out of this piece of brass. This was given to me way early on when uh, I first started with the lathe. Um, thank you, appreciate it. And I think we're going to make three of these out of this. I'm going to I'm going to make one first. Make sure my dimensions are right. That's the trick to making these things. They got to spin. They need to spin like a top. You know, they have to be able to stand up for a while and do their thing. Making tops isn't quite as easy as you might think. You got to get your dimensions right. You got to have some weight. You got to have a little height, but not too much height, or the things just don't spin. So hopefully, I can figure this out, and we can make three functional put and take games. So that'll be today's project. Well, we're just gonna get, we're just gonna wing it. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I think it's got to do with the mass of the spinning portion with your point. This will have plenty of mass, I believe, because of the way that I'm gonna make this thing. These were some tops that I was messing around with early on. This one was my best attempt. It's short and stubby, but there's more mass at the top than the bottom, but you know, I, I think that this will work. I'm going to start with a 45 degree angle, I think. 
and see if that will work and a smaller shank on top. Hopefully we can get enough mass and that thing will just spin. Otherwise, it's time to get started. I think what the first thing I'm going to do is get all three of these sides just faced off and cleaned up just so they're all flat on all the sides before I get started. Um, and then we'll get on to making one, make sure that the thing spins, and then we'll make the other two. So let's get started.
think I can do better than that. I'm not sure what if maybe maybe this needs to be higher center of gravity and there needs to be a little bit more of a point. So I'm going to make a slightly different shape. This one works, so I'm not going to scrap it. But it's not ideal. It's not perfectly balanced either, but you really got to get it zip, zipping to, to go. So let's try number part number two and see what happens. All right, I think we have a, a pretty good design now. Hitting stuff. So here's the first one. Here's the second one. Ah, keep hitting stuff. A lot less effort to spin it. It doesn't need to spin forever because you're just playing a game. But that one's way easier to get going. All right. I'm going to make another one very similar to this one. And that's going to be the design. When we're all done, what I'll do is actually cut, cut, uh, measure all the dimensions, and we'll we'll make one. That way, you can copy it without wasting brass and things like that, like I'm doing today. Um, that way, if you want to make one, you can just whip one out with the same dimensions that I'm using. But this is this right here is a good design. So I'm going to modify. I'm going to get some actual real world dimensions, not guest guest dimensions, and. Uh, we'll make this final one with some actual, you know, thicknesses. This is a 45 degree angle for sure. I'll, I'll measure the, the length here and the, the thickness of my, the top and the, and the length. All right, I went back and drew this up after that successful attempt here. And I'll cover this more in the recap when we're done, but I wrote out the, some actual dimensions that made sense, some real, real world, not just guess, guess dimensions, I call them. Well, I'll recap this. We'll draw it out. You can take screenshots or whatever. Um, but what my aim here is that I did the legwork and just got some dimensions on the piece of stock. And then you can take those dimensions and make your own without, like I said, wasting a bunch of stock. So let's get started on the last one. And I think we're going to have a success. We're going to find out. But this will kind of determine if, if these plans I drew up are indeed going to be the right dimensions to make this thing spin. So the first thing I want to do is bring this down 5 8 shaft to 3 8 3 8 inch thick. Let's draw five eighths right, right there. Yeah, that'll work. 
so right up to that black mark. So let's switch out our tooling. All right, we got a winner. I just tested that. So I'll show you all that when we get, you know, back over on the bench. But right now I want to clean this up as best I can. Kind of make it shiny and see if I can make this thing look nicer. So I have two pretty good successes. One of them works. I'm not going to throw it away. But the last thing we'll do is stamp. I've got some really small stamps, but that's what I'll use. We'll stamp the things in here. But first thing I want to do is polish this up. Let me clean this up a little bit. So we've got our base games made now, and I, I played around, if you saw in the previous clips there, I played around with some uh, different designs, and this is the one I like for this particular game. It's kind of hefty, it's got some weight and feel to it, plenty of room there if you have some bigger punches to put uh, your markings. 
like we would on the game. This was a first design, uh, but it wouldn't spin. But I realized that uh, a rounded nose is kind of key on this. So here's the first one. It spins quite nice. Here is, I don't know, these are both about the same. The second one, and then here's the third one. So they all spin great for the game, and they they kind of land on, you know, where they should land. These two fall over usually. This one didn't, but it's nice when they fall over, because then you can you know what you're at. This one always seems to have a flat up, so it does okay. If you get it going, it'll it'll spin quite a while, longer than these two. But I still like the heft of these two. Anyway, the next thing we need to do is stamp them. Let's, let's complete these games. I could have done a little knurl or something on the end, but uh, they don't really need it. I kind of like the clean look. Anyway, let's stamp these things and complete this little game. And then uh, we can call that project complete. These are fun, fun games that you can share with some friends, family, um, just hanging out with your buddies in the garage or whatever. It's a pretty fun game. So let's get these stamped. I'm gonna use, we'll see, this might be too much cushion on here, but this is brass. Let's start with this one. Got my little bench block here. Got my, so these little, these are very small, but they're gonna work. That's what I got, so that's what I'm gonna use. So we want to do, we're going to, you do your opposites, right? You do put one, take one. Put two, take two. All put, take all. So I think what we'll do is start with, it's a P. So P, where's my numbers? There's a one and a two. I'll need those. Um, I need an A. Which would be right there. So I'll put and a T. Take all. So put one, take one. Put two, take two. I'll put a P or take all. So I'll need a T. Where's the T? Or did I already get the T out? P? One, two. A. And the T. Already got it. All right. So let's start with uh, put one, and then we'll flip it over and do take one. There's the P. Grab my ball peen. This is going to look like I did it by hand. There's a P. One. There we go. A little harder. So opposite of that, we're going to do a take one. So I need the T. Oh yeah, and then the one. Put one, take one. So the next will be, we'll flip them. So we'll do T, T1. Or T2, we're going to flip them. So this will be a T. T2. And then P2. I think it's so you don't have the T's and the P's next to each other. 
P2 So take two, put two, and now next to the T2, we'll do all put. So an AP, there's an A. And then our P, all put. And finally, we'll do take all. It worked. We'll see if I can get it on there and give her another... Give her another... I'm not going to push my luck. Take all. So there we go. Definitely looks hand punched. Probably hard for you to see too close. But there you go. Put one, take two, all put, take one, put two, take all. There's the game. There we go. Take all. I win. There's one. So I'm going to fast forward through this, but I'm going to go ahead and do the rest. I don't have big a big punch, so I'm just going to do... I'm going to use what I have. So we're going to finish this project. Who's out there?
there we go. That is the game's complete. The only thing, if you wanted to, you could put like some nail polish on here and wipe it off. Let the paint get into the lettering so they stand out better. But for my part, that's as far as I'm going to go. These guys are working. They all spin. They all would make a fun game. And if you've never seen a play, it's super simple. It's one of those easy to easy to go with games with anybody wants to play. You don't have to play for gambling and all that money. People, people tend to like to do that, but uh, it's not necessary. You can play with tokens or quarters or family or it, it just doesn't matter. Just have fun. It's a homemade game that you can play with your fam friends and family. Let's put those away. Put that away. And I'll give you a little demonstration. If you've never played the game before, get some, get yourself some quarters. You got the invisible friend over here. You got myself over here. And we're both going to play. So everybody needs to put in a quarter to play. Then you grab one of your to totems and you let her rip. Hopefully it doesn't fall off the board. It did not. It says put two. So P2, I got to put two. Then uh, Frank over here plays. He spins the totem. Let's use a different one. That one is all put, so everybody needs to put one. Now it's my turn again. We'll use this other totem. And usually what I'll get is like a, a pan, a round pan or a square pan or something. That way your, your totem spinning top doesn't go flying all over the place and all the changes in there. And it's kind of fun because it interferes. That one is a P1, so I'm back to put one. And then uh, here's the original design that I got from uh, an old friend that worked in a factory. It's made with a ball bearing, a nut, and a copper tube. You can make these things however you want. Kick it over here. Now we all put. So everybody puts. And eventually what happens is somebody hits the take all. And, uh, and then you start all over again. Take all. I win. Anyway, it's a fun game. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you liked uh, the dimensions I shared with uh, making one of these things. Overall, it's a fun game to play. It's kind of cool, and you can make it yourself. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you on the next one.